folks, look, we need killer jeans movies in our lives, just like we need way more horror films about how anything in our house can kill us. From killer sofas to deathbeds to killer condoms to tires to elevators. Yes, it has been years since I've set foot in the elevator in my house. The horror comedy Slacks is a Canadian film, which can currently be found streaming over on Shudder. The film is like Chopping Mall meets Confessions of a Shopaholic. Do I need to sell you on this movie more? Slacks is the story about what happens when a pair of jeans is possessed by the spirit of an Indian worker who died while being a child laborer. The jeans are then sent off to the world's most vapid clothing store during a lock-in to unveil their latest product. In other words, it's a horror film with a message, just like Killdozer's anti-Watergate message. I don't even know how they pulled that off! The film is co-written by Patricia Gomez and Elsa Kephart, with Kephart directing, and I guarantee you it'll be the nice horror movie surprise you need this season, with our spring colors coming back in fashion. But we still gotta start out with how these killer jeans came to be! See? Told you the movie is gonna get deep. It opens with cotton fields. I've seen this on my show before. This movie is gonna be the identical of Killer Jeans movies. I've seen enough films to know that if you're making clothing in an experimental field, it means that final processing is somehow gonna be made with the magic of Stonehenge, of course. Really, these kinds of jeans should be no shock to us. Back in the 80s, we used radiation to make jeans because we thought it would make our penises bigger. Speaking of 80s, props to the opening title that makes it look like a sweet hairband. Here at Canadian Cotton Clothers, aka CCC, it is the perfect season for murder. Look, they have all of their orange jumpsuits on sale. I recognize this store. It's the one I would walk into to ask where the bathroom is and if the food court has a salad creations. The new hire for the store is Libby, who may or may not be promoted to horror movie survivor of the month. And as far as the manager Craig goes... Thank you. No, Libby, thank you for joining the CCC family. That's a dude that has more skeletons in his closet than the killer jeans do. Having worked at a mall game store in the past, it's nice flashing back to the halls we used to sneak off to and have a cigarette. This was long before my career as a YouTuber, you know, like this other character in the film. Today, we're at Hashtag Yoga, a store I'm like totally in love with. Ugh, I hate the clothing snob. <laughs> what a hack. CCC has a strict policy of only hiring people that you'll want to see die in a horror film. I'm wearing some right now. Oh, those aren't from this season. <laughs> Luckily for you, my fist is always in season. While Libby may be more likable than the others, she's still perfect to work here. She comes with a clothes-changing montage. You are officially an employee of CCC. Now, how about that discount? You don't start till 12.01, so, uh... You're not an employee till tomorrow. I haven't even seen the jeans yet, and I'm already rooting for them. And I'm kind of rooting for Craig, too. He's delightfully over the top, like he needs self-help to keep himself from screaming jelly side down. You know what this is missing? Characters who abuse the word literally. I ate half an apple at lunch, which I know is more than 20 calories, but these are literally gonna save my ass. Thank you! If you need help spotlighting the evil jeans, they're the ones with the radioactive logo. When I grew up, we had those in our shoes. It's what made them light up. Really, I think the jeans are just here to tear down what I think may be a clothing store cult. Ah, uh, possessed jeans. Good for killing, very bad for cramps. There's good sight gags here, like how she stole the jeans that are killing her, and the sign says, theft hurts us all. The cinematography by Steve Asselin is also on point in bringing out the colors in this store and shooting their pep rally like a Frank T.J. Mackey seminar from Magnolia. I love how this build-up to their new line of jeans is mixed in with a scene where this happens. <laughs> And that's why I wear sweatpants. The new jeans are known as Super Shapers, which are being promoted as adapting to your body size. I can't 
prove this is the Back to the Future 2 universe, but I just know the jeans are from the makers of Power Laces. They do such a good job of advertising the jeans that even though I've seen them kill someone, I still want them. You know why? They're self-cleaning. That's worth the price alone. And the CEO, Harold Lansgrove, seems nice. I hope you'll be with the CCC family for a long, long time. I see no reason not to trust him. And don't bother trying to get him to know your name. He doesn't even know when he's talking to Patrick Bateman. Um, it's Craig. Please, call me Harold. Yeah, okay, Craig, Patrick, Harold Carnes, Harold Lansgrove. Just tell me which one is Paul Allen. I know who Peyton Jules is because she sounds like a porn parody of an influencer. Shout out to the editing here, too, that does fun things like using a split screen. Then when it goes away, we see that one of the two was standing close behind the whole time. No matter who you are in this film, you cannot resist the allure of jeans that also self-dry, fold, and hang. Eye cancer is a small price to pay. And they're probably still safer than driving on the highway. <laughs> that would have happened anyway. This is the kind of thing that always happens ever since stores introduced shoelaces. Finally, a movie that explains to me how my socks always end up missing. They just crawl away. I knew it. Plus, if you can't find your missing employees, just follow the running gag of ironic store signs. These evil genes will have to be taken back, though, as they did not properly store the dead body. It's funny when Craig pretends to be sad while thinking she did this to herself and doesn't want to call the police because they're on lockdown with no phones, all to unveil the secret new genes. Again, it happens all the time at malls. You just wheel the dead body over to the food court subway so that she can become the sub of the month and... You were such a trooper back there that I'm going to waive the first month of your mandatory employee purchase plan. See? The day isn't all bad. These jeans are more seductive than Jason Voorhees' heart when someone bites into it. This could go south if the jeans find someone who wants to kill them by making them cutoffs. That doesn't happen here, though. <laughs> Could have been worse. You could have gotten your balls stuck in the zipper. The special effects group does a wonderful job with the gore and practical effects through the film. It sucks you into the story and the violence. Not to mention poor Craig, who really is having a worse day. I'm sure this employee also did this to himself. I love how actor Brett Donahue brings the energy of a manic Hallmark Christmas movie villain to a killer jeans horror movie. I had a feeling he was evil. Let's get someone more evil. Bring in the vlogger! Yes, that's nice, but can she review an E.T. porno where E.T. shoves a phone up his ass? <laughs> we'll find out when we return. At Just Pants. We are back, and no, E.T. does not shove a phone up his ass. Now let's get some insight from our influencer. I love everything but these. That's the tagline for all of our shows. Finally, a character relatable to the common man. My credibility is at stake here. I have millions waiting for my broadcast. Well, just... Oh yeah? Well, I've got thousands waiting to hear my thoughts about Batman's dick. These jeans can't wait to get off the hangar long enough to kill this girl. Do you mind not hiding the bodies right now? I'm trying to be influenced over here. But it's just, like, not possible to cut back on those triple fudge Oreos or that last bite of Mickey D's. Whatever. Eat a 30-year-old Reggie bar. I'm still waiting to be given a reason to subscribe to this channel. Yeah. 
Okay, fine, I'll subscribe. For the time being! So far, we think it's simply evil genes, but what if it's really just the invisible man screwing with them? Craig is looking at the bright side of things. He can fire the janitor now. The genes also take care of the store. The filmmakers are great at really making the genes feel like a character in the film, with its pockets looking like eyes. And sometimes it is eerie how these characters talk to each other. Do you actually think you have a shot at being regional manager? I love watching a horror movie that has the satirical edge of Roger Corman and the staring daggers into your soul power of Godard. This is like the Audrey 2 of jeans. They even have a musical number. <laughs> well, that settles it. The best dance number of the year is no longer Trump versus the Illuminati. I grow more interested in how these genes work. They can now possess a mannequin, making this a proper sequel to Mannequin and not that mannequin on the move mumbo jumbo. I think everyone will come out on top. They caught her last vlog on camera. They can release it themselves and go viral. It's probably what Craig would do, who by the way is finding it much harder to masturbate to security footage. Craig in this movie has big David Brandon from Stage Fright energy, in that he's making the situation much worse, but also being my favorite character in the movie. Before you think that dance number had nothing to do with the plot, oh, it does. It was the Bollywood music that made the jeans dance and not kill her. So they test this theory by playing more Bollywood music to bring out the mannequin. I can vouch for this. It's why I go see so many Tiger Shroff movies. The dancing calms my bloodlust. It loves Bollywood music, and it has a bindi on its forehead. It's like the jeans are me! I remember the time I took a hand and wrote that I was the spirit of a 13-year-old girl named Key Rot, who used to work labor for a clothing line that made cheap products they sold at a high price, and then this happened. As you can see, Key Rot the jeans want justice. Or, at the very least, an Auntie Anne's pretzel. I love that they do try talking with the jeans to try to stop any more bloodshed, until... God damn it, Craig! Also the tagline for another cinema snob movie. If you go into this movie demanding a killer jeans army that feeds on human flesh, much like the killer slugs from Slugs, you will not be disappointed. And as a bonus, you get Craig, too! So I've been thinking, I'm gonna need you to hand over that camera. See, he wants his channel to take off as well. In trying to cover up the jeans, Craig becomes the real villain of the film, and even chases them around like he's a store manager Jack Torrance. And she will be Dick Halloran. I know earlier I was talking about ironically rooting for the jeans because the employees were unlikable, but now the jeans really are sympathetic characters in the film. The army of jeans is like I'm watching a better version of that Maul the Merrier movie. It's got great payoffs too, like when Craig is bombarded with the jeans. It's like someone looked at Rhodes death from Day of the Dead and thought this needs to be in vogue. Seriously, they whittle him down to a skeleton. I actually am caught up in the drama here, like Libby telling the jeans that killing the customers isn't justice, yet the biggest threat in the scene is the mob of customers coming in like a zombie film. What comes after is bloody, moody, funny, sad, haunting, and doesn't overstay its welcome as the movie is only 73 minutes long. This is a smart little film that perfectly satirizes these trendy fashion stores and their self-righteous employees, but also cheap manufacturing and child labor, and using all of that to, in true Corman-like fashion, tell an effective story about killer jeans. It's almost the clothing store version of the Child's Play remake. The movie's available for streaming over at Shudder and is a solid way to spend 73 minutes. All while I'm perfectly safe because my sweatpants aren't gonna kill me. <laughs> They're just gonna sit on the floor smelling like my ass. Hmm. Just gonna... oh. oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that does kind of match. I love Bollywood music. <laughs>